Good afternoon, good morning. That felt like my convocation actually was. <laughs> CP was so kind. Thank you, respected uh, Mr. Anand Mahindra. Thank you, sir, uh, for gracing us with your presence, the Chancellor of this University, the Vice Chancellor, the Guest of Honor, Sri Krishna Ella Garu, Dr. Krishna Ella, CP Gurnani, my dear friend, Vineet Nayarji, uh, Honorable Principal Secretary Jayesh Ranjan, to all the dignitaries on the dais, to the faculty, to the staff, to the non teaching staff, to the proud parents, and most importantly, to all the graduating students, thank you very much for inviting me and thank you very much for having us here. Now, first of all, my heartfelt congratulations to all the students who have successfully passed their courses and are receiving their degrees today. My special congratulations also to all the award winners who have shown excellence in their endeavors. Amongst the private universities that have been set up in the state of Telangana, Mahindra University occupies a place of pride. The Mahindra Group is reputed for business excellence in diverse fields, and there is no doubt that the university is also run with the same passion and commitment in achieving excellence and in making all the students lifelong votaries of excellence in whatever they do. Mr. Anand Mahindra himself embodies another very important virtue which is that of compassion. In fact, when he was speaking, I was listening in very intently. Now, when he talked about a combination of art and science and what he wants to bring about in Mahindra University, eventually a blend of both. I remember a conversation that I had with a friend of mine. Now, this friend of mine had mentioned, had told me that there are two kinds of people in the world, artists and then there are the scientists. Artists who think with their heart and scientists who basically let their mind dominate. I think with what Mr. Anand Mahindra was alluding to today is he wants Mahindra University to create that new blend, that new breed of people, which is a good combination of heart and mind, which is a blend of art and science, a new breed which is a combination of artists and scientists and hopefully all of you and the future classes of Mahindra University, future students of Mahindra University will become an embodiment of that. Good luck to you, sir, on that, uh, on that effort and I hope. I hope you'll set a benchmark. I hope you'll raise the bar in India for other universities, for other academic institutions. Mr. Mahindra's life has been spent in making our country proud by coming out with products and services that are truly world class. He's a visionary in that many of his ideas are futuristic, anticipating the needs of the world decades ahead of time. I'm sure that the university also has fostered a strong culture of compassion, innovation, and inquisitiveness in the hearts and minds of all the students here. Young India, you know, I call India young because, as you all know, if you look at our population today, 1.4 billion India. 50% of India is less than the age of 27. 65% of India is less than the age of 35. That's why I call our country a young country. As the world is getting older, India is getting younger. And youth in our country especially are brimming with ideas, are brimming with energy, are wanting to take on the world and have an aspiration that is truly global. They have a voice and want to be heard across the world. They are no more passive observers of events going by, but possess a strong desire to be at the center stage and make a difference and an impact globally. In a way, this augurs very well for the country as we are very close to the cherished milestone of 75 years of independence of our glorious nation. These milestones are also occasions when we have to think about our future and how we collectively intend to make the future much more than what the past has been. The youth are going to shape the future immensely. Not only our country's future, but Indian youth have the unique ability and the unique opportunity of shaping the future of the modern world. The youth and how we groom them today, what ideals and aspirations 
we sow in their hearts and minds and what kind of responsibilities we bestow upon them at an early age will matter the most in how young people will contribute to the noble task of nation building. While our country, India, has done rather well in the last 75 years in general, yet the reality is we are still a developing nation. We are still, by global standards, a third world country. Somewhere or the other, we seem to have lost track of the most important priorities and have focused on issues that distract us and cause divisiveness amongst ourselves. Let me share a piece of statistic which might be of interest to you. Back in 1987, about 35 years ago, when most of you were not born here, actually all of you were not born here, India and China, countries of similar size in terms of population, had a similar size of economy as well. 470 billion dollars, exactly the same size. But cut to 35 years later, today China is at 16 trillion dollars GDP and India is only at 3 trillion dollars. And we still keep dreaming the 5 trillion dream. Now, I don't want to point fingers, I don't want to say anything which is political, but I have to say this. I think the, the future of India will augur well for us if we are not distracted from economics, economics, economics. You know, politics can wait. It can happen once every six months in five years. But the remaining four and a half years, I think the nation, its polity, its political leadership, in fact, has to focus, has to remain focused on economics, on creation of employment, on issues that really matter to our future. While the politicians of this country are largely to be held accountable for their inability to arrive at a consensus on national priorities and then devoting their energies in achieving them, we also cannot ignore a sense of apathy, apathy amongst the general population in allowing things to come to such a state. Amongst many of the perceived problems about India, one that is commonly noted is that the brightest minds, implying all the people like you, are working endlessly to solve the problems of the rich, while collectively ignoring, completely ignoring the problems of the poor. As I mentioned, hardly anyone has focused on building houses and toilets for the poor. But there are hundreds and thousands of bright engineers and architects who are constructing villas in gated communities for the rich. It is time that we also change our lopsided priorities and ensure that the task of nation building remains supreme for everyone. While we all speak about India as one nation, which it is, we should also accept another reality that within our country of India, there are 28 different Indias, meaning there are 28 states within India which are extremely diverse and have their own levels of development. There are few states today who have focused on good governance, balancing the priorities between welfare, development, have designed people-centric programs, and have implemented all their ideas and goals with perfect execution. I feel very proud to share with you that our young state of Telangana today has become a role model state in the country for rest to emulate. I know that students of Mahindra University come from different parts of the country, but I would encourage all of you to look at the opportunities that are available in Telangana in Hyderabad. Telangana is the champion state in promoting innovation and entrepreneurship amongst the youth. Like no other government of the day, our state has invested heavily in creating world-class institutions where young minds who have the passion to make a difference are encouraged in every possible way to make their dreams a reality. It will be a matter of tremendous satisfaction if many of you could join hands with us in creating a future which was envisaged by the founding fathers of our country 75 years ago. I do hope that each of you will step out into this world as young people, not only having great knowledge and skills, but also as young people who want to contribute to the betterment of the society and become change makers. Once again, I wish you all the very best for your future. Jai Telangana, Jai Hind.